Hey, it's Clay. I uh, want to do a little vlog here. I'm actually um, just hanging out and I had some time to kill and I had my MacBook, so I wanted to do a little vlog, something I had on my mind. And that is uh, the way that your gear uh, changes and kind of grows and evolves with you. I was kind of reflecting back on my history and, you know, kind of everything I've used. I started out with a Blues Junior and a pedal board and I went to a HD 500. I went through a couple of different modelers, you know, I get tried the uh, 11 rack, and now I'm on the XFX2, and I've got some studio monitors, and, uh, you know, I'm still looking to get a foot controller, but just kind of the way that my rig and my gear and my needs has all kind of evolved over the years. Um, you know, I've been playing guitar in churches for probably maybe five or six years now, um, and it's just kind of been interesting to me to kind of see the way that things change, and, you know, one of the things that I can't help but think about is how practical it is. I mean, more than anything else, your gear has to be practical. I I know that I'll, we spent a lot of time talking about tone. How does it? How does how does the HD five hundred compare to the G three in terms of amp tones? You know, how does how is the XFX better than the eleven rec in terms of tones? Um, and that's important, but it's definitely secondary. I think um, maybe more so than I would say than I would like to say, if that makes sense. Um, you know, because I was think thinking about this. I actually, um, over Christmas break, I went home to my hometown. It's a small town in northwest Iowa. And, um, you know, playing at a small church, I I was home and I contacted the worship leader and said, hey, I'd love to play if you can have me. I play electric guitar and I'd love to worship with you guys. And uh, just kind of, it was crazy. Like, I showed up and I had my 11 rack and all this gear and I was all ready to rumble and um, I actually brought everything I brought up my amps too just to kind of make sure because you never really know and it turned out that the 11 rack really was not a good fit for that situation not just be not because it didn't sound good or because it wasn't EQ well but just because of the nature of their sound equipment and the room that they were in and just kind of the way that they do the instruments there um, running through the PA was not a very good choice Whereas at the place that I play now, it's kind of a bigger church I, in a bigger city. Um, it doesn't really make sense to have an amp just because you want to limit stage volume and you want more of a professional tone coming out of the PA speakers. Um, so you want to really rely on that. And, you know, even something like the HD500, there have been times when, you know, using I've been using the Behringer FCB1010. And um, in, in terms of foot controller it's not as good. It has not been as effective as the HD 500 was. Um, and there are times when I kind of look back and think, man, it would, be, it would have been kind of nice to have the HD 500 in that situation just because the the way that it works as an all-in-one, how easy it is to set things up, is it's just so incredibly effective. Um, so I was, I was just kind of thinking about how important it is that your gear is practical, that it works, that you can get the tones that you need very efficiently, that it, uh, in terms of volume, com you, you're getting the proper amount of volume. Your interaction with the PA is really important. Your interaction with the drummer is really important. Um, you know, stage volume, all those things are factors that come into play about whether or not your rig fits your situation. And one thing that I've noticed too is that every time I've played somewhere new, my rig kind of shifts a little bit. I, I've never gotten to the point where I've had a rig that works everywhere. And I'm, I, I feel like I'm starting to get to that point. Like if I had the XFX2 and maybe if I bought like a powered PA speaker, maybe something like a Alto or maybe a, you know, a Mackie or, um, you know, even something like the QSC, something like that, some of those higher end ones. Um, you know, something like that could, could do a really good job of, you know, thriving in almost any situation. But I've definitely noticed that... Um, you know, things change, things grow, things adapt, and your rig has to grow and adapt and change, and that's good, and that's okay. Um, and it's just been interesting to kind of look back and think about the ways in which my rig has changed, and, and you know, I've definitely grown as a player. I've definitely matured a little bit more as a player, um, and, you know, I, I, want, I want things to be good. I want my tones to be good. I want my performances to be good. Um, but, you know, it's definitely... It's interesting to kind of think back on all these things and realize how practical it is underneath it all and um, just how important it is that it simply works, that it works in that situation, that it gets the job done. Um, 
So keep that in mind whenever you're building a rig. You want something that works. You want something that gets the job done. And um, and sometimes tone is secondary. Sometimes it's it's not always the central thing that we wish it would be. Um, you know, because the XFX is great. It sounds amazing. But I found that its functionality is almost even better. Um, it's it you know just the way that you can route everything, how adaptable it is with all these types of different rigs. I mean, it's it's crazy cool, and that's one of the huge advantages that I've found compared to like a tube amp rig with a pedal board. Um, so that's just kind of my thoughts. I'd really be curious to hear your guys' thoughts on how your rig has changed, kind of depending on the situations that you're playing in, your your needs, your wants, your ear. Um, you know, because I think that it's it's kind of cool to look back and think about these things. So I'm gonna sign out here. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you soon.